Sup, you beautiful bastards. Welcome, uh, well, to my always in shambles because my children destroyed every 36 hours home office. Also, welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. I'll be honest with you. I uh, I did not really want to make a show today. I was very uh, tired. I was being a very big baby about it, but I also know a lot of you like this show, so I decided compromise. I'll make it, but I'm going to be a snarky little bitch the entire time. So yeah, if you want to be a snarky little bitch with me, maybe hit that like button. Uh, let's just jump into it. Y'all, first up, we have quite honestly the dumbest damn thing I have heard all day. And at the center of it, you have Demi Lovato. And this is reportedly because in an interview Lovato did with Pedestrian.TV, they were talking about UFOs and aliens and Lovato said, but I think we have to stop calling them aliens because aliens is a derogatory term for anything. That's why I like to call them ETs. So yeah, that's a little tidbit. Oh my fucking God. <laughs> Oh my fucking God. <sighs> also, what makes that quote even better is uh, pedestrian.tv then says, editor's note, as per Demi's guidance, we have refrained from using the A word in this article as it's an offensive term, no matter who you're directing it at. File that away, please. And like, I'm not angry. I'm not raging. I'm just exhausted. How will there always be people in our species that take something that has like a, a core understanding and like, you're like, oh, I think that kind of makes sense. And they take it to a crazy extreme. Like the pushback against the word alien is that it's being used to describe humans. Inherently, that's what it is, right? People are saying, just call them undocumented people. Like that, I can understand. But Demi Lovato is like, we can't call aliens alien. If you go to Merriam-Webster, a section of it literally says, coming from another world, extraterrestrial. Is there just not enough real stuff happening here on Earth that you're word policing for outer space aliens? Ugh. Anyway, then we had former flat earther Kyrie Irving in the news because he exercises personal freedom and choice to give all the other super teams in the NBA a better shot this year, further cementing his legacy as someone that really believes in fairness in sports. Though I will say the, the Kyrie and NBA situation is interesting because it doesn't impact all players equally. Right? Because while most if not all of the people around NBA players do have to be vaccinated, like there are mandates. There is not a mandate for NBA players. Rather, there are three teams most impacted because of local mandates that affect the players there. Also, I want to say because I've seen some people like turning this into an NBA player thing, like, no, it's not NBA players. And it feels like you going after NBA players. It's a uh, for a specific reason. Yeah, NBA players have a vaccination rate of over 90 percent. If they were their own country, they'd be, I think, possibly the if not one of the most vaccinated countries in the world. Then whether you love them or hate them, it appears that NFTs are here to stay dot, 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 at least for the time being. Part of the reason for that is yes, we're seeing big names get involved, but also very big companies. For example, at the end of September, TikTok put out a big news release saying that it was launching a creator-led NFT collection, and calling the collection TikTok Top Moments, saying that the NFTs will feature the likes of Bella Porch, Lil Nas X, Grimes, Curtis Roche, Brittany Broski, and more. And at that time, saying that it would debut with a launch from Lil Nas X, saying that his NFT would go on sale October 6th. But uh, yeah, it's uh, past the 6th. That date has come and gone. Right, so Lil Nas X's NFT has not gone up. And in fact, if you go to the auction page today, the only thing that you'll see from the line is Curtis Roche's board in the house video. And as far as what is happening, why is this happening? It appears that there are concerns. Rolling Stone putting out a report that the Lil Nas X NFT may never actually arrive, adding that Bella Porch is actively contemplating pulling out of the program due to worries about its execution. In fact, according to Rolling Stone, three sources familiar with the rollout have described it as a challenge, a mess, and a complete joke. And I gotta say, it must be all of those things, just an absolute train wreck because there is a lot of money at stake. For example, in this report, sources also said that in order to secure Bella, TikTok offered her marketing support worth potentially $4 million for her next release, also promising to use one of her songs in an end of year campaign. Though you also had a spokesperson for TikTok saying that was not accurate. But ultimately, as far as my opinion on this, right, if it's true about Lil Nas X and Bella potentially pulling out despite all the obvious upside, I actually would commend them. Because unfortunately, a lot of high profile creators with these very large audiences aren't thinking how this is gonna impact the people that watch them. With many treating it like a quick cash grab, not thinking about it. Should these tokens have utility? What happens when one of my, the people that support me, they follow me, they buy this, and then it immediately drops in value. And I say this while well, knowing that like most of the people that watch me, they they look at NFTs like like tulips. But I truly think in the, the company and the creator space that utility could be something that, that's actually dope and usable. That provides instant value and control and potential profit to your community. But yeah, the main point, uh, be careful out there. There are a lot of people with a massive spotlight and influence that, that prey to the altar of money or the uh, the altar of community. Then in Quakey Celebrity News, we have the weird, dumb, and hey, kind of nice. For the weird and maybe the dumb, I'll let you be the judge of that. Uh, we had the Lord Farquaad of celebrities, Vanessa Hudgens in the news. And that because a portion of an interview she did with Shape Magazine went viral because she said she hates water, seemingly so much so that she actually fainted twice from dehydration. So not like I didn't have water, I hate water 
so much. I let my body go mm, power down, couldn't be bothered. But also, wouldn't you know it, like 99% of things, anytime a celebrity is mentioned in the news, this is obviously orchestrated PR. Because you also have Hudgens saying she actually prefers to hydrate herself from cactus water, and wouldn't you know it, she launched a cactus water company this year. But also, as promised in good celebrity news, we had YouTube's own Jack Jacksepticeye because he announced that his Thank Miss event will happen on December 11th. With the event involving a ton of creators getting into simultaneous streams to raise money for charity, the goal there to raise $10 million for a group called New Story that works to end global homelessness. And while December 11th is a little ways away, if you're an interested creator or you just want to donate now, there's actually a page for that and I'll link to it down below. But from that, I'm going to kick it over to Phil from yesterday because I want to take a second to thank the fantastic sponsor of today's show, Raycon. Co-founded by audio engineers and some of the music industry's elite, Raycon is disrupting the electronics industry by designing premium wireless audio for half the price without compromise while prioritizing their customer experience from start to finish. Lately, I've been using Raycon's E85 wireless work earbuds for conference calls with their six microphone system that cuts down on environmental noise. Your voice is crystal clear on calls. Not to mention the endless Zoom calls. That could have been meetings, Amanda. But also on those, I tend to use ambient mode so I can be more available to hear the world around me, especially helpful because of the kids. I can hear them if they need help. Sometimes I hear them when they're not even there and I have to get off the call. And with a range of fun colors and patterns, they also sound great with a 32 hour battery life, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, a variety of fit options, and no dangling wires or stems. And best of all, right now, Raycon is offering 50% off just for you. So click that link in the description down below or go to buyraycon.com slash DeFranco work. You'll get 15% off your order today. And don't forget they have a 45 day free return policy. So what are you waiting for? Then we had Texas Governor Greg Abbott seen here meeting one of his biggest fans this week. Oh my God, is that the governor? Yeah. Are you the governor? Yeah. Oh my God. Why would you sign a law telling women whether they could have an abortion or not? That makes you a with Greg in the news today because yesterday he issued an executive order functionally banning any vaccine mandates in the state, right? So an anti-mandate mandate. And notably, this includes those imposed by private businesses. And notably, this isn't just an expansion on his previous orders banning local governments and school districts from imposing vaccine mandates, but rather this new order represents a very significant reversal for Abbott, who previously gave companies the ability to choose if they would require vaccines. With one of his spokespeople saying as recently as August that private businesses don't need government running their business, but it appears that he just meant different governments. With this, obviously putting him at odds with President Biden, who announced last month that federal workers and contractors as well as companies with over 100 employees must require vaccines or test weekly for COVID. And since then, a ton of corporations headquartered in Texas have imposed vaccine requirements like AT&T and Hewlett Packard Enterprise. But also, Abbott's order is going to go beyond just internal corporate matters, right? This is going to impact air travel as well, because American and Southwest Airlines, both of which have enacted similar mandates, are based in the state. And as far as what happens next, like it's going to be the same dance, but a different topic. Like The legal challenges to this are all but guaranteed. And I mean, notably, legal experts have said that U.S. courts have historically upheld vaccine mandates because infectious diseases impact more than just the people who oppose the mandates. But still, uh, the dance continues and uh, hey, the, the lawyers get paid. Then in, it doesn't feel appropriate to even say this is a douchebag of the day story. This is a monster of the day story because it's a story about a former nurse in Japan who killed three elderly patients back in 2016 by mixing detergent into their IV drips. But they're now in the news today because during her trial, which started earlier this month, she blamed her behavior on exhaustion, which is self proclaimed leader of exhausted people of America. I denounce her. She is not one of us. But yeah, this 34 year old defendant saying that caring for sick patients was initially rewarding, but she was mentally and physically exhausted from the job and thought about quitting and claiming that she developed anxiety three years after she got her nursing certificate in 2008. This after she felt at fault for failing to save a patient who died under her care in a different hospital. She was then prescribed sleeping pills to cope with her anxiety, which she then continued to deal with throughout her career. Also claiming that she was treated badly by the families of her patients, which added to the stress and none of this. No, you straight up murdered people, you fucking monster. And what's worse is she actually tricked another nurse into killing two of them. Right? Two of her victims, ages 78 and 88, died when another nurse inadvertently administered IV drips that she had previously mixed with disinfectant. Also, oh my God, thank God she was stopped because she even admitted to planning to kill four other patients that same month, having already mixed detergent into their IV drips. But on the day that her last victim died, a coworker noticed bubbles in one of the bags and found a hole in the drip stopper, showing them someone tampered with it, that person then calling the police, and that ultimately led to the arrest and confession. And so currently, this monster faces five years to life in prison or even the death penalty for murder. On that note, in court, she said she felt no regret about what she had done, but felt more relieved than anything at that time. Also during court, ordered psychological evaluations, the woman was determined to be depressed and mildly autistic, but the doctors also said that her symptoms were a distant cause of her motive in committing the crime. Right, because don't even try and make this about being autistic. There are millions upon millions of autistic people that don't murder people. But yeah, as far as what happens next, we have to wait until November 9th when the trial is expected to 
conclude and a verdict will be given. And then the final thing that we're going to talk about today is that this afternoon we saw Teton County Coroner Dr. Brent Blue giving a press conference about Gabby Petito's autopsy. We hereby find the cause and manner of death to be the cause death by strangulation and manner is homicide. With them also going on to say that by Wyoming state statute, no other information will be released regarding the autopsy. Now, notably, while that meant that he wasn't really able to answer questions from reporters, Lou did confirm that the time of her death was about three to four weeks before her body was found and that it appears to have stayed in the wilderness for that amount of time. Though they're also noting that he doesn't know the exact date of death because it's difficult to pinpoint. Also of note with this story, we've seen a lot of internet sleuths claiming that she was pregnant, saying that would be revealed in the autopsy. But regarding that, when asked by a reporter if she was pregnant when she was killed, Lou said that she was not. And the last thing that I want to note from this press conference is that while Blue said he could not discuss other information from the autopsy or provide additional information about Brian Laundrie's potential role in the homicide, we did see him say this when asked about the publicity around the case. Unfortunately, uh, this is only one of of many deaths uh, around the country uh, of people who are involved in domestic violence. Right, so seeming to suggest that domestic violence was involved here, but as far as more information, definitive information, we're going to have to wait and see what happens with law enforcement officials. But ultimately, that is where that story and today's show ends. And as always, whether it be this last story, the first one, anything in between, I'd love to know your thoughts in those comments down below. But yeah, let's close it out today. My name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces, and I'll see you tomorrow.